welcome back to the channel. Yep, I'm in the shop, I'm in the studio. We are working, or Chris is working on the spray room area. I got a couple little odds and ends that he's doing, but his main purpose is to build a sliding door, a sliding barn door for the spray room, which the, the sliding part is makes it so easy to open and close when you're doing stuff and it's just very appealing. And I love the pallet wood because it gives me a beautiful backdrop to be able to film on. But I do love this cubby. I'm probably going to end up keeping this cubby right where it is. I'll probably add some terracotta pots to it once I start bringing my terracotta pots in for the season, um, which is probably soon because we're in October now. But I'll probably get some of those put in there because not everything. You know, it would make a wonderful display in um, like our retail booth, but the problem is, is the cubbies, it's small cubbies. It's got, it's got the larger in there, you know, but then most of it is just small. So it would be really hard because I'd have to only have small pieces. And I know Joanne used it and she had lots of little pieces in it, but I think I'm just going to keep it for the shop. I think it's beautiful. I love it as a background. I love taking video in it. And yeah, I'll probably put some of my terracotta pots in there. And I think, oh my gosh, it will be gorgeous. So yeah, look forward to it. I'll probably, I'll probably film that for y'all to see too. But let me share with you. Um, oh, so I got a phone call the other day from the lady that owns our antique mall. And she was at a sale, which used to be a local sale but now that i'm in a different town it's not a local sale but she's like there's a couple things here yvonne that i think you and chris would want and they were old workbenches now we have not been able to get our hands on any old workbenches to resell or chris has actually been looking one for the shop he has a love of old tools the old workbenches so i took the half hour drive which you know if you live in the city a half hour is like going across town but from city to city to city, and it, I just lucked out that the two workbenches were still there when I got there. Though she had to call a, another lady that was interested in either one or both, so I may not have got them, I may not have got them. And then she ended up being a viewer of the channel, God wink moments, there's always those God wink moments, and the other lady buying, the other word, workbench was actually a friend of ours, her, uh, uh, her, her son it was actually our ring bearer in our wedding <laughs> when he was three. Oh my gosh, we're not even going to do the math on that. But anyway, so we did come home with one of the workbenches. So let me show this beautiful piece to you. And it's funny because I actually already filmed a little bit on it. And you'll see that in an upcoming video because I Chris had put it on wheels to move it around. And I'm like, hey, will you keep it on wheels? Because I might roll it in and out <laughs> of the pallet area to be able to use it as a backdrop. So, or at, not necessarily a backdrop, but like a table to put things on. So, oh my goodness. Let me take this camera down, share that with you all, and then we will get into some projects. Hey y'all, there it is. Though Chris already has a project going on it. Um, it is just a beautiful look at that workbench. Oh my goodness. Now the funny story is, is this isn't the original one that came with it. The, this is like to screw, it's like a, the old fashioned clamp, y'all. Um, vice clamp. Um, he actually had bought this piece at an auction and it came with a different piece that he didn't really like as well. So he changed it out for that piece. It is that perfectly and perfect. He's got, he's got a mechanics, box right now that he's working on on top of it so I'm not going to move any of his pieces and parts but oh, is she not beautiful if you saw my Instagram post you already saw her oh oh my lord am I just uh you know I tell you god wink moments everything happens for a reason or it doesn't happen oh I love it love this is as cleaned up as she's going to get. <laughs> he might make it a little bit taller. Or he said right now it's comfortable to work on. So he may just leave it as is. But like I said, I had he put it on wheels 
because we still aren't sure where everything is going to go in the shop. But I'm like, if you keep it on these wheels, I can move it back and forth to use it. But what is it about old aged wood? I mean, just everything he's got going on on this table right now, this mechanic boxes, this, this, I don't even think you'll see this haul before this video airs. Um, but it, it needed some help. And then he has a couple older boxes that he, he's working on to clean up. You know, you have to, sometimes for him, he has to stop working on projects in the shop and work on some of the old, his own projects. You know, this is his stress relief too. You know, getting your hands in a craft. So yeah, this is Chris's stress relief too. I get to be over there working on projects and painting and I know he loves to build stuff, but he also loves to fix stuff too. So yeah, so it, you know, it, like I said, <laughs> I'll probably say 101 times it may take five days to do this workshop or it may take 10 years. I have no idea, but it, it it's we're able to work in it and that's all that matters. So we do have a little bit of organization done. I have, he, he ended up, I said, if you could bring my paint boards over, that would help some of his clutter on his side of the workshop because these are what I use to carry projects. Um, so he had these old crates, these old apple crates that were just in the barn sitting there that I just could never pass up. So that works out perfect, perfect for these paint boards. So I still, I still have not organized anything in these cupboards. Oh, I wish I would do it. I'll, I'll figure out some, somehow, somehow to get it done. So I don't ever remember if I shared with you how Chris was using a bowling alley, a piece of a bowling alley that he had purchased from a bowling alley in our local town that we both grew up in that was closing and being torn down. So this is a piece of the bowling alley that he is using for his countertop and our other workshop. He did the exact same thing, though you can see it does not completely fit. He wanted to get cabinet trees that were a little bit bigger in the other shop. He made cabinetry, but that's okay. His plan is to make little cubby boxes to fill in that blank void space. So now that it's a bowling alley, you know, they had layers of wax and lots of wax and lots of oils. <laughs> so those balls would just slide. So there's some prep to do to it. So some sanding, some getting it cleaned up. Um, he had to, because once you took the bowling alley apart, it actually all comes apart. So there's pieces of two by four on the underneath of it to support it, to keep it together <laughs> until he actually got it attached to the cabinet tree. So yeah, I didn't know that either, that they are not really, the bowling alley pieces aren't necessarily glued together like a butcher block. They're free flowing or free floating, I guess. So the thing that we did notice at our other shop that he had actually shellacked the top of it, top coat, you know, the liquid like a polycrylic, polyurethane, and it just didn't absorb into the wood, probably because of all the layers of oils over the years that a bowling alley has put into it. So to seal the top of this one, he's just going to use some clear wax and he just went for the Howard's clear wax, just something to put a protective layer. So if he spills something on it, he doesn't ever really plan on using this area for painting or staining or anything like that. It's just to, it's just a workbench. It's for hammering and nailing and taking things apart and setting things down, a place to set things, looks for screws and that whatnot. Yeah, we never really liked the finish that was on the other piece of bowling alley in our other workshop, by all means. It just, it just never seemed to cure right. It never went on even. And the stains did not come off of the, t the top coat very well because the top coat, I don't feel like it ever really cured. But boy, does it make a beautiful countertop. I just wanted to share how we finished it in case anybody else has the opportunity to, to run across <laughs> countertop or a piece of bowling alley to use as countertop. Yes, it's not not like your re regular old beadboard. It's just gorgeous, and the story is amazing. And that he has that done, he's gonna go ahead and start putting his hardware on. He, and I, when I bought hardware for my cabinetry, we got enough that when he got his cabinetry on his side, 
<laughs> um, that they match. Now, our cupboards do not match. If you saw that episode, I got my cupboards from Menards, and they were kind of a nightmare, and they're still a nightmare. They're not, still, that whole issue has not been complete because it's an hour away, and we don't have time just to keep going to Menards. It was already seven trips. So Chris just purchased these ready-to-made <laughs> cabinets from Home Depot. He just took them out of the box, and here they are, other than having to add some hardware to them. Though mine are flat, completely flat. His have a little bit of detail on it, but that's okay. At least they're white, and they both match that way. And I really don't know how long it's going to take us to complete every little project in a shop. It may be a decade from now, but little by little, we are piecing it together. So if you haven't ever seen a pallet load of pallet wood, here it is. Yes, Chris, Chris works at a pallet shop. He does not have to dismantle the pallet wood. They have a machine that does that. It just takes it all apart and he can actually buy for $200 a pallet full of pallet wood. So, so after completing the outer of the pallet wood wall, our framed in spray room, this is what it looked like when we left you with the last video, the progress. I still love it. And I know I'll always love it. Pallet wood to me is just classic. It's got that beautiful and perfect, perfectly and perfectness to it. The colors, the stories it could tell, the way it's been around the world more than we probably even know. But I love this room. So do we have enough left to build the door? That is, that is the next stage of the spray room is building a door. And by all means, oh yes, we still have a plenty left. But I use pallet wood a lot in other projects, so I'm happy to have a pallet full of it. So it's hard to believe that this next step, that this piece of plywood will be become a beautiful barn door, a sliding door, so that we can enclose the spray room. So now one other project that Chris is working on is building a barn door for our spray room. That is one feature in our other workshop I absolutely loved. Oh my gosh, I love pala wood. I love barn doors. I love the ease of a sliding door. So this is the base for the sliding door, a humongous piece of heavy plywood. So he's just cutting it down to size. And then to make... The it match the barn door match what he's done on the outside of the spray room by doing the pallet wood that's what he's doing on the front of this now that is going to be one heavy door y'all but it's the same as what we did at the other shop so i love the variation of wood we don't sand any of it he doesn't take any nails out unless they're in the way from him putting it onto the board you know there's some broken pieces which are great because then you can cut them down and use them for other you know pallet wood is that perfectly imperfect by all means it's different colors it's different types of wood it's got it's got step marks on it it's got fingerprints on it it's got nails and staples and what have you writing and sometimes there's even some spray paint on the so you just have to pick out which board you want <laughs> little by little. Well, hello, beautiful. Look at all that wood. I love that he cuts it all different lengths so it has that variation. It's not like board after board after board. So it'll definitely just blend in with that space. Now to hang that big beast of a door, we ordered some hardware for barn doors, sliding barn doors off of Amazon. Though this one is different than our last one. The last one was a solid, the long piece of metal was solid. This one was actually in part, so it was a little bit more difficult. I guess, you know, year after year they do change things. Year to year they do change things. 
Chris is never one of those people that ever really asks for help. I'm the same exact way. So he just, <laughs> we just, we are just those people that just do things on our own. So he's just videoing himself <laughs> working. He probably could have used a helping hand, but nope, he was just going to, he was determined to get it together and get it level and get it hung up. This is where you ha wish you had somebody that followed you around and could film you 24 seven. So each where, East place he has one of those clamps is where the metal has to be put together. There's a little screw that bumps out so that it stays away from the wall. So each one of those joints he individually had to attach to the wall. So I'm not, I don't know why they changed it. Probably for shipping <laughs> purposes, I guess. But yeah, I think we like the solid piece better, but oh my gosh, love this door. Now the one next step that he needs to do is he needs to run a board the opposite way, just a one by so that it stops the, stops the door from cupping. As you can see, it starts to cup with the weight of the plywood. The plywood just does that, but if he attaches a outer piece of wood, that will help it stay straight up and down so there's there is just a little bit more work than just slapping pallet wood on the front yes you need something to help stabilize the wood to help keep it straight we put the one on the inside of the door and now he's putting the one on the edge of the door clamping it together so it's nice a nice tight package and getting it screwed in place and so this is really going to help keep that door straight up and down that it's not going to cup anymore all right so what i came up with was to take some old lumber that i had and mount this to the back of the door and what that'll do is allow me to basically make a, a frame around it and as i do that i can use a squeeze clamp to pull out the bottom of the door so now the door is straight. <clears throat> and with using this old wood that's rough sawn, it really matches how the pallet wood looks. So I thought I'd pop into our house. I have a couple little areas I've been tweaking like I said, I have not done a whole house tour because I'm still tweaking things, you know. I really think you have to live in a place and 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 the problem <laughs> with being a reseller is that we shop all the time. So then we're constantly upgrading <laughs> and changing outer decor. Um, yeah, but I love it. So I have a few new pieces I'm adding in, if y'all. Well, not really, like majorly but i love to share ideas um and i do that a lot on instagram if you do not follow me on instagram pop over there but not everybody has instagram so some of you may have already seen me do these little a couple little staging home decor but i i like adding them into the videos just to share some ideas with y'all because like I said, not everybody has the other social medias. So it's just fun. And then I slow them down a little bit. You know, those other social medias have to do everything so quick. You know, people's, people's um, attention spans are those like a 30 to, yeah, 30 seconds. Yeah, a lot of the time you gotta do them really quick on those other social media sites. But here on YouTube, we can slow it down just a little bit. So let's pop in the house and take a look at some of the decor that I just put into into motion with some newer thrifted items. I kind of have this problem area where I have two thermostats because we have a propane tank and we have a wood burner. And I've been trying to find height to cover up that one that is uh, yellowed. So these ironstone pitchers, I just was able to get my hands on some fresh dried hydrangeas and that perfect green with that slight purple color. So I think that's enough height that it'll uh, at least it'll distract from that so you know sometimes you just gotta tweak here and there like okay i think that this is going to work i might have to change out 
the pictures but yeah at least that one that's yellow I, how do you paint it because then you won't see the wording and how to switch it oh I hate it but at least I'm able to co cover it up and I just picked up this bowl from somebody's booth and if she, she I think she saw my Instagram maybe <laughs> that I'm like hey you don't have a price tag on it I really would like this bowl because I have some yummies that I want to put in the bowl which of course are my thrifted bibles and then this beautiful rosary Oh, I'm so happy with that little space right there. Now, this is the way I filmed it for Instagram. Unfortunately, the sunlight was hitting the glass, so I this was the best view you're going to get, so it's a little bit smaller of a screen. But what is it about a beautiful glass cloche that you put things under a cloche and it's just amazing? So we're going to build a little display under this very large cloche that I upgraded from an auction that I was afraid to ship or sell or even to put into the booth. So just a little riser that I just recently painted, and I'll share that on the other channel, what it looked like before to go along with the Bibles on the other side. Of course, you know, I have some Bibles. Then I have this little plastic toy horse. I just love the black and the tail. I think it's th that pops against that white. And then of course I have a baby Ben clock because I love those clocks. And then we just enclose it in that cloche and it's just a statement piece. Well, I've really struggled with the space since we moved in, but with the pictures and the cloche, and that clock in the middle of this all is from 1918. It's Chris's love of mantle clocks. And this space is kind of weird because I wanted to hide the thermostats. It's the area underneath the steps. It is right across from our table. So I really wanted just some simple decor. To have one more little decorating idea for you all. I recently picked up some of these old... I'm pro I don't know if that what this was from, but I recently just started selling these candles also in our only in our retail booth. I can't sell them online, but I just wanted to share the simple of using this old wooden wheel for a riser. Love it. Love all the woods together. It goes perfectly on my primitive table in my living room. A great place to put just little pieces of decor and a great place to have your candle and my fan's going, so it did. my candle didn't want to light. But, yeah, I just wanted to share with you, like, if you ever see, like, a wooden wheel or a, a piece of a wooden pulley, it's just absolutely beautiful. And I have a basin from a water pitcher that is ironstone, and I just put some of these old croquet balls in there. Balshi balls, whatever, these little weight things. I absolutely love that display. Last little piece of decor that I'm adding into my house is this mirror. I just recently got this on a 50% off estate sale find. Love it. But it's not the color I want. I've been looking for something with some character, some details. I want I wanted that arch. Um I like that it's rounded, but I'm going to go ahead and just use the the Fusions Coal Black paint on it and give it a new color to fit in with my decor. And then Chris is going to come in and do, do what Chris does best. And he is, you know, he is a measurement guy. He's going to center in the space. He's hopefully going to find a stud. If he can't find a stud, then he will use a drywall anchor. You know me, I would just like eyeballed it, put a tack up there, see if that mirror would have held. But no, it's a heavy mirror and it's an antique mirror. So I'll, I'll let him do the hanging on this one. And I know I had not cleaned it yet, but he was ready to hang it and I can clean it after he has it all hanged. No worries on my part. So I love the mirror. So the reason I wanted to, you know, you are always looking for something. I needed that arch. I wanted it to have some kind of detail, which then matches the clock. And then if you remember the uniqueness of our house, is that down where our living room is i need to re you know tidy up the couch so i'm not going to get too close but there's the arch there so if that all makes sense to you all i wanted that same little feature that was in the clock 
and in the mirror. The little entryway here is a tight, <laughs> it's a tight little fit. We have a place to drop our coats. I'm still looking. I want, I want a church pew, y'all. <laughs> but so far, I've not been able to get my hands on a church pew. This is a bench that Chris made, which I love, but it was supposed to be for outdoors. But you need a place to take your shoes, hang your coat up, hang your purse. Um, and then we have our little, like, beautiful cupboard. This was a wedding gift from my in-laws. I love my little cupboard with my antique sign that I made. But it's nice to have a mirror to check yourself before you leave or guests coming in. So I wanted to have a mirror in here. And I actually thought that I wanted it on this wall. But when I set it on this wall, just on the ground, I'm like, oh, I think I like it there. And Chris liked it there too. So yes, the two little arches kind of coordinate with each other. Though I'm still having problems with this. Not that, it, not that I'm gonna get it to work, but I need to get something to help that one side to stay up. Ah, oh, it drives my OCD a little bit on the crazy side. Uh, not that it doesn't work, it doesn't drive me crazy, just that I need to figure out how to get that side up. The door is done, so next, the next video, hopefully the inside of the spray room will be done because net was just the outer shell, just that part so the inside needs to be done as well so there's a little bit more work to do before um getting it all tied up and be able to actually use the inside we've got wrapping and ventilation and protection and some shelving and all that whatnot to go inside but uh I love it. I do love pallet wood. I love that variation of the wood. It's not everybody's taste by all means, but I sure do. And we have a lot of the pallet wood left, which I am happy about. So $200 well spent was able to wrap this and then have lots for projects. So thank you so much for watching today's video, you all. I appreciate everybody following us here on the Journey channel. For those of you have, that have not subscribed yet, we're still getting more views than we have subscribers and i know that this channel wasn't going to grow really fast and we weren't going to have like this awesome because we you know we're older in age we're probably not as funny or i don't know anyway anyway you know I, for whatever reason but the more subscribers you get the more um better ads you get the better um recommend recommendations from youtube so if you're watching this and you have not subscribed yet the purpose of this channel was to share behind the scenes share little tidbits that we wouldn't share on the other channel and also to get my husband chris home full time so we really need you all to hit that subscribers button please and thank you very much so we can get him home to do this full time with me so thanks again for watching today's video and as always we love you all thank you for being here and being so supportive we will see you next time and you can see what we're up to bye